Stat of the day brought to you by Panini America, the official trading cards of the program. Today's uh, Mercedes-Benz interview of the day brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. They have an SUV for you. you visit MBUSA.com for special offers. Devin McCourty, Football Night in America analyst on the call last night with Kevin Harlan, Westwood One Radio, Bills, and the Jets. Time to panic if you're a Jets fan. No, no need to panic, but I think – Everything that went on last week, I think it would have been a good thing for this team to go out and get a win just because you fire your head coach. Everything's going on, and they competed and played well enough to win two missed field goals, penalties all night, uh, kind of summed up the Jets overall this season. Okay, what are the Jets missing if you were going to try to pinpoint one or two things? It's hard to say because this team – They've played well enough to win. I think it starts with just having an understanding of situational football. You do everything right, and then it comes to the time to make the play. So I would say overall, they need better coaching and better execution in the key moments of the game. It's not like young guys or rookies making mistakes. Some of these guys making mistakes are veteran players that they're counting on. 22 penalties. I mean, it just feels like, uh, when in doubt, throw throw a flag. Is that the feeling you got last night watching this? Yeah, on Pro Football Talk this morning, I, I told Mike Florio the thing that kept me up all night is I, I kept hearing the sound of the ball hitting the upright on the field goal post and then whistles. It just seemed like every time there was a play, there was a three whistles at the end to stop it and let everybody know there was a flag down. But what I will say is, the officials called the game consistently. They they were calling it tight, and they did it all night for both sides. So it was really up to Buffalo and the Jets to adjust their game and kind of do business as business was being done, not to continue to play the same way and rack up penalties. But are you okay with that? They're, they are going to call everything, but you know they're going to call everything? Yeah, I've always felt like that. When I was a player, we used to talk about that every time we had a game in New England. Coach Belichick would come in. He would tell us who the head official was. He would tell us what were the penalties that that crew kind of focused on, whether it was offensive holding, defensive pass interference, all those different things. And then the last thing he would tell us is, no matter what I tell you, the game will do get decided. It'll be dictated. We need to do business as business is being done. Pay attention to how they're calling it on both sides of the ball and then adjust how you're playing. Don't just keep doing the same thing and then get mad at the referees. Would Aaron Rodgers scare you as a defensive back if you were playing against him? Oh, no doubt about it. I think every week we've watched him, it, it seems like there's one or two throws that he makes that you say, yep, that like that's the Aaron Rodgers we're used to. And I thought last night he was pretty good all night throwing the ball where only the receivers could catch it. It wasn't a perfect game plan, but – you know, they were a few plays away from easily winning that game. He finds Garrett Wilson in the back of the end zone. Taylor Rapp makes a big hit on him. But then he threw an absolute dime to Garrett Wilson that ended up being a touchdown. So he still can do a lot of effective things outside, out there on the field as a quarterback. Feels like if uh, you're a defensive player, you want to keep Josh Allen in the pocket. Because once he gets out, once he rolls right, I'm like, uh-oh, somebody's going to pay. And, and think about that, Dan. Like, he rolls right. He's a few yards from the sideline, throws it to Ray Davis, 42-yard gain, unbelievable play. But the play of the day probably is him rolling left where it looks like Clemens has him. He gets out of that, rolls left, swings his body back around and finds Dawson Knox in the end zone. It's just – it's so hard to stop him. You try to keep him in the pocket, and then you come to find out the last play, really last play of the game for them – it's supposed to be a pass to the right to Ty Johnson. He decides to keep it and just <laughs> outrun everybody to the left. Phenomenal player. Uh, just love watching him play. What's it like to tackle him? Not fun. Not fun. The guy, <laughs> he can run around you. He can run over you. And uh, as I found out one year, he could also jump over you. So <laughs> his athletic ability and what he can do as a player is just nonstop pressure on the defense, running and throwing the ball. Uh, unbelievable guy. So you made his highlight reel. Uh, possibly, possibly. I, I, I like to, I like to take pride in, I didn't make a lot of highlight reels, but hopefully he makes enough great plays that that one kind of falls off the list. But you've picked him off before, haven't you? 
Yeah, so no matter what, if he plays a highlight around me, <laughs> I will bring up that I picked him off a couple times. <laughs> so they give everybody who wins the Super Bowl, so you got your Super Bowl trophies behind you? They give you a replica of the Super Bowl trophy? Uh, they don't give you, but there's places you can go and get a replica, and a lot of us got them. So uh, my wife finally finished my office, well, helped me finish my office, so I was last on the priority list. So here they are now after, uh, you know, about a year. Okay, let's go around the room. Let's take a guess how much the replica Super Bowl trophies <laughs> cost. Do we just want to do a combined total price of what they cost? Do you want to do that? Todd, how much do you think the three Super Bowl trophies, the replicas behind him, cost? $3,475. Oh, okay. All right. Seaton? Did we say each or, or All combined? Together. Yeah, combined. Uh, I'm going to say $750. $750. <laughs> They're not made out of aluminum foil. <laughs> Marvin? <laughs> Five thousand dollars. Yeah, Paulie. They look legit. Heavy base. I'm gonna go twenty five hundred bucks for three. I'm gonna go uh, forty five hundred dollars. I don't remember the exact number, but whatever the three thousand, that was the closest oh. uh, to the price. It was it was about thirty five hundred. Did Brady have to pay for his? Probably not. I mean, it's Tom Brady. I, I highly doubt it. I had to pay for mine. A couple of guys did, but I, I doubt Tom did. <laughs> what did you think of Drake May with your Patriots? I thought Drake May got off to a good start. You know, I think everyone had a lot to say about starting them now, especially against Houston and their defense and their pass rush. But he showed poise. He got through adversity, got hit pretty pretty good amount uh, Sunday. But, you know, he made some throws in the game. And I think the whole New England region is excited going forward knowing they got Drake May. Is there one thing that all rookie quarterbacks do that – like there's a tell or you know, how they call a game, what they see, staring down receivers. Is there one thing that comes to mind for you? I used to say there were two things, usually staring down receivers. And, and a lot of times with these young athletic quarterbacks, there was going to be a lot of what we call move the pocket plays to get them outside where they either could run or throw the ball. But I have to say these rookies this year, they haven't always looked like rookies. They've done some things at a high level, uh, and it's been fun to watch, especially you look at Jaden Daniels and, and Caleb Williams. And I know Caleb Williams got off to a little rocky start, but when it's moving, these guys look like veterans out there. Was it you or your brother who was not aware of the Beatles? That that was Jason. That was Jason. How is that familiar possible? With the How is that possible? We He definitely knows who the Beatles are. But I have to say, growing up in our household, we didn't have a lot of Beatles songs playing uh, in the household. We had a lot of Jackson 5s and different things like that, but uh, not a lot of Beatles. What else would you have besides the Jackson 5? Oh, my mom My mom played all different type of R&B, gospel music. So we had the Commodores. We had the Temptations. We had all of those Growing up, you know, Saturday, Sunday mornings, either getting ready for church or cleaning the house. My mom would have those uh, always playing in the house. Great to talk to you, as always. Great job. Continue uh, to do that. And uh, thanks for joining us. Appreciate you, Dan. That's uh, Devin McCording, NBC Football Night in America, studio analyst, and uh, was working on the call last night. Westwood One Radio with uh, Kevin Harlan.